well there's the cylinder one it doesn't look too bad but there's i'm sure there's a lot of carbon so we're gonna start inspecting that right now i have a special tool i made myself here's the special tool i'm using the drill bit on a socket i've made that a long time ago was a little bit in there all right this is round two so you can see i'm using some grease with it too so it keeps all the carbon in one spot okay guys after reaming the glow plug number one i'm ready to install this good used glow plug it's actually a monarch one made in germany i tested it it's working great and install that i don't know these this used one it looks to be fine i think there was just a bunch of carbon buildup that's why she wouldn't like to start because the power is coming from the relay to the glow plugs yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and install this one and i already tested these good used ones they're they're glowing they're good Okay guys, now we're taking the second glow plug out. It's gonna, they're all gonna get replaced. And then I just need to ream the hole inside that uh, where it sits to make sure she's free of carbon. Okay, glow plug number two, not too bad. About to ream the hole. Okay, after reaming the hole for the first time, let's check it out. Oh wow, it's a lot of carbon in there. Oh yeah. Okay, second glow plug going in. Disconnected these uh, number three or four glow plugs and now I'm just gonna take those out to ream, <coughs> ream the holes and you know, install good glow plugs in there okay reamer gonna go in Ooh. this cylinder was a lot cleaner still some carbon in there new glow plug going in on this cylinder i had this one in stock so installing this one so this number four cylinder has a lot of carbon buildup the way you know is i can't squeeze this uh drill bit in there it's like really hard i might have to use a ratchet on that okay now it's a little better wow that was definitely quite a bit still is let's see oh yeah okay ready to install this the last glow plug easiest one a rainy day today guys but gotta keep on working on this amazing machine yeah okay guys now I want to change these fuel return hoses the ones that are on this car are like I don't know these rubber ones I don't like them I just want to change these, you know, install these factory ones, better fit too. They weren't leaking or anything, but I just want it to look factory and nice and everything. Not all this aftermarket bullshit. Okay, so I just kind of take one by one and start cutting them to length. There we go, this looks so much nicer factory and everything beautiful amazing and then do the same to these ones just start pulling them out look at this this is like some rubber just vacuum hose or something generic one i don't like it I don't know the people some people are putting the green ones on here but it looks so horrible like why would you put some green fuel return hoses from amazon or something make it look nice like this factory ones that's it perfect 
Okay guys, so I finished installing new fuel return hoses. The only thing I don't have is that plug right there, which I'm gonna replace later on. Yeah, but now everything is nice. Nothing is, you know, rubbing against each other. And what I noticed actually is this linkage right here. It's been off of this vacuum control valve. That's crazy. Yeah, it's supposed to be connected, but it's not. So I gotta reconnect the bag. It's been rubbing up and down like this, as you can see for a while. So I'm gonna add more grease to it. Yeah, I don't know. I actually never noticed that until now. That's crazy. So I gotta reconnect it. I'm not sure, but so I can reattach this rod to the vacuum control valve, but this plastic, it's like a retainer, but I don't know if it's broken or not. So I'm gonna have to kind of dig into that. I feel like there's another piece here. I feel like it's been broken. I'm gonna use a lot of new uh, hoses, vacuum lines for this. I'm just redoing the routing right now. Okay, as you guys remember, this, I, I'm just using a zip tie for now to attach that rod to the vacuum control valve. And it's fine, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, so she's gonna be okay for now until I get the original parts. Everything good to go. Let's see how she starts. Okay, guys. Well, um, I got some of this stuff installed. That vacuum control valve stuff. Um, the one of the parts is missing, so that plastic piece. I'm gonna have to find that. Uh, these vacuum hoses are all installed. I think this is the correct uh, schematic. This is brand new right here that I used. Oh, most of these uh, vacuum lines are brand new. This one this three-way valve whatever i have to get a new piece for it which is that one yeah that one is broken unfortunately but that's okay um so yeah most of it is installed i still have to test drive the car make sure trans is shifting and you know the, the engine shuts off and all that stuff i don't know the vacuum blocks may need uh work so i might have to do some elimination stuff if there's a vacuum leak as you guys know i mean it's not gonna you know if there's a vacuum leak that's bad it's gonna basically drain all the vacuum and it's not gonna let the engine uh, shut off and some other stuff so um but as of right now this is the setup right here and we'll see if that's actually gonna work or not okay so now i don't like how this one has that thing the screw so i'm gonna pull that off i have another one and we're gonna install that well, the screw we're gonna save, but I already replaced these return lines, but I just haven't replaced this one. So we're gonna do that now. There we go. And then I have this one, brand new. Right starting. Okay. One more. Yay, she's alive, my baby. A little cold. Okay. Yeah, and then there's, it's crazy because I, I haven't noticed, as you guys know, I don't know if I told you, but this car used to be a parts car a while back when I first got it. And it basically has, this AC line is missing and this AC compressor is just dangling there. It's not mounted properly at all, so I'll have to work on that. But she's running. My soup. <laughs> we should have gotten like a brake cleaner or something. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna get ready to remove the battery tray. Uh, as you can see, so this actually, my old friend used to, he actually take care of this area, but he didn't do it properly. So I wanna take it out. I have a different battery tray for it. And I want to 
you know why are we all this area up too so I put grease everywhere here there's some surface rust for some reason yeah and also this bolt is, has been broken off unfortunately yeah but it is what it is right now I'm just gonna you know remove the rest of them that I can take these side bolts out too you gotta do this job properly so that's why I'm taking everything out again to so do it the right way I'm gonna wire wheel all this area up properly take care of this rust All right, guys, so it's the battery tray. So this 240D has this bracket right here that I need to swap, and engineers made it so nice that you can swap it, actually, to the other, another battery tray because it has this retainer for, like, the starting wires and all that stuff. So we're going to take care of that, and there's the area. There's some holes. But i got to wire wheel all this area up, guys. It's a lot of work. Not a lot, but there's some work that needs to be done. Amazing machine. Just gonna exercise the brakes and transmission and the engine and things like that. Haven't driven this machine in a while, so. so much. 